Hello and welcome to Dotto Tech. There is one certainty in the computer world, the fact that we're always looking for faster and bigger as a way to get better. More memory, a bigger hard drive, a higher resolution screen, faster processor. These are the measuring sticks for better computers. But I think it's high time that we reevaluate that value system. I want to show you this. This is the Acer Aspire 1. It's a class of computer that I've been waiting a long time to show you. It follows the philosophy that less is more. Now, it looks sort of like a child's version of a notebook, and I suppose in a way it is. It is small. Take a look at it in comparison to this standard 15-inch business notebook, and as you can see, it is far smaller. So it obviously can't pack the same processing punch, and, and it doesn't. But that's not a real deal breaker. The biggest difference between these computers, other than size, is there's no hard drive in this version of the Acer. It's a solid state computer, meaning there's no moving parts. The notebook ships with either four or eight gigabytes of flash memory, which is the same type of memory as we have in a memory stick or in a memory card in our digital camera. And that's the only memory that this computer has. Now there's some huge advantages to this type of memory. The size, weight, power consumption, and speed are all far better than traditional hard drives. But of course, eight gigabytes of space is very limited by today's standards. Many of us have way more than eight gigabytes of music alone on our computers. So this lack of space is a real issue. That is, if you look at the Acer Aspire 1 as a regular computer. Don't do that. Instead, look at it as a task-centric computer designed for several simple and essential tasks. It's designed for web access, for writing email, basic business, and basic school. So it is not an entertainment notebook. You're not going to make a movie or edit a bunch of photos or keep all of your music on this computer. But you will keep a calendar. You'll do research, including surfing the net. It's all about portability, cost, and addressing some simple, crucial tasks. Now, the whole computer itself weighs less than one kilo. It's powered by Intel's Atom processor, which is ideal for frugal power consumption. Because with a computer like this, you don't want to be tethered to a wall outlet. Now the screen here is an 8.9 inch backlit LCD screen. And the resolution on this display is 1024 in width by 600 in height. So we lose a little bit of height over the standard notebook. A standard old 14 inch notebook, say, had 1024 by 768 resolution. But the width of the screen is standard and it's a very clear and crisp screen, easy to read. Another big thing is it runs Linux, not Windows. With only eight gigabytes of space, you can't take up too much room for applications and operating system, and Linux fits the bill well. This version of Linux is called the Linpus Linux Lite OS. Now, Linux, being open source, is far less expensive than traditional operating systems, and we'll look more in depth at the Linux operating system a little later in this show. But one important bonus is that running OpenOffice as a business suite means the whole computer can retail for under $400, including software. The next crucial thing to understand on this computer is it is completely designed to be an internet appliance. It's all about connectivity, and this computer comes to life when you consider it as an internet computer. So it has built-in Wi-Fi networking. But enough talk, let's take a look at some of the features. So expandability is really important when you have a computer like this. So we've got lots of expansion ports. If we look at the side here, we have a memory card reader that allows us to plug in secure digital memory to expand the amount of memory we have. We have an ethernet port if you don't have a Wi-Fi network work handy. We've got a USB port and we have an external monitor jack that allows us to plug in a VGA monitor. On the other side, we've got two more USB ports. It's got three total USB ports. It's also got a multi-card reader that allows us to plug in different format digital camera cards and it's got a headphone and microphone jack as well. So it's got all the expandability that you really need. Now another nice feature is right here at the top, it has a built-in webcam so you can use it for internet chat and that sort of stuff. Now the keyboard. The keyboard is a little on the small side. I did my first serious writing on this last night and even though I don't have very large hands, I still made a lot of mistakes typing on this keyboard. And if you take a look and you take a look at a full size regular keyboard, you can see it is quite a bit smaller. But it's far away from being the smallest keyboard on the market. I mean, take a look at the size of the BlackBerry keyboard next to it and people do a lot of serious writing even on a BlackBerry. So it is quite functional, especially if you have have smaller hands. If you have large hands though, I'm pretty sure you're going to have to be a, a hunt and peck typist. Now as you can see, this computer tells a very compelling story. But there's something bugging you, isn't there? Don't worry, I know what it is. You're saying, Steve, what about my files? I get that we can fit an operating system and basic applications into eight gigabytes of memory, but what happens when I start saving a lot of files and I run out of space? Well, if you absolutely need to carry around all of your files with you, 
there's a version of this computer available with a built-in hard drive. It is in that case really just a mini laptop and you can use it the same way as you used full-sized computers. The version is also available running in Windows so everything is just the same but smaller. The solid state version though it fits into our lives differently. It's an internet appliance and I'll explain that to you when we return. Blogs, podcasts, streaming video, you can find it all on our website. Check out dototech.com.